Thanks, Des. And we're diving back into our series through the book of Philippians called Joyful, a full life amidst real life. You know, I came across this quote from the famous theologian John, Jonathan Edwards. It says this, The enjoyment of God is the only happiness with which our souls can be satisfied. Fathers and mothers, husbands, wives, or children, or the company of earthly friends are but shadows. But enjoyment of God is the substance. These are but scattered beams, but God is the sun. These are but streams, but God is the fountain. These are but drops, but God is the ocean. Today, regardless of where you're at on your spiritual journey with Jesus, there's an invitation to joy. And a reminder for us that God actually wants to lead us to joy and that joy is found in life with him. This, this book of Philippians that we're walking through is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a church in Philippi known as the Philippians. And Paul's actually writing from prison. It's around A.D. 61. He's writing from a, a, likely a prison in Rome. And he's going to be killed, actually, just a short, shortly after this in a couple of years. And he's writing to the Philippians who have been faithful partners with him. He's writing to say thank you, to appreciate their partnership. And though he is... In prison, though he's facing challenges, this letter is full of a theme of joy, of fullness. And so there's so much for us to learn because don't you want a life of joy? Don't you want a life of fullness, a full life? Now, how we go about seeking joy and fullness, that's the question. That's the thing that's important for us to evaluate. And so let's look at the Philippians here. I'm going to start by giving us a bit of an overview of the theme around joy, and then I'm going to zoom in on a few verses of where we ended off last time, and then we're going to start next week in Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, and we're going to walk verse by verse through this, this letter that's inviting you and I to joy. Let's pray and we'll dive in. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you are powerful and present with us. And that you, this is not just about religion or ritual or routine, but there's a relationship that you invite us into and you want to speak to us. You want to lead us to life. You want to lead us to purpose. You want to lead us to joy. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you can open your Bibles, please, to the book of Philippians. In chapter 1, in verse 4, Paul prays for the Philippians. He says, when I pray for you, I pray with joy because of your partnership. See, they're partnered together, and that leads Paul to pray with joy. In verse 18, he says, you know what? Some people seem to be stepping into leadership or competing with Paul, and uh, that must be difficult. But he says, you know what? I rejoice as long as Jesus is proclaimed. Like, and that what a statement there. Paul's in prison, and so there's, there's gaps of influence that some people are wanting to step into. Maybe it's something like, okay, now maybe I could be a leader or have a voice because Paul is locked up. And Paul says, you know what? I rejoice as long as Jesus is proclaimed. You know, friends can let us down. Circumstances can be less than ideal. Challenges can come. Our health can diminish. But he's, but he's got this perspective. If Jesus is proclaimed, I rejoice. Jesus is the source of life. And if he's being made known, I can rejoice in that. What an inspiring statement for you and I. Where are we looking for joy? And is Jesus and his proclamation leading us to joy? And he goes on in verse 19 saying that he can rejoice because deliverance will come. In this life or in next, Jesus wins. And I'm with Jesus, and there's deliverance with him. So I've got hope, and I can rejoice. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. And then in chapter 4, verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Here's Paul in prison, and it's not a nice prison, and he's saying rejoice. Rejoice always, right? Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll, again, I'll say it again, rejoice. Now, it is natural for you and I, think about the last time that you had a great day, that you experienced joy. It's natural for you and I to, to experience joy if, it, if the sun's out. And don't we love the sun being out in the Vancouver area? When the sun is out, when things are going well, when I have a protect, productive day and crushed my task list, right? When you're on a nice date, when you're doing things that you love, oh, it's good, I'm feeling joy. But 
This is circumstantial joy or happiness, and these circumstances don't last. They're temporary and they change. So what do we do with that? What do we do with the fact that he's saying rejoice? And actually, we're called to rejoice always. Anyone like candy? All right, maybe as a kid, you loved candy. When I was a kid, I loved candy. It's amazing how kid, my kids love candy. It's amazing how candy is just like a, uh, you know, like a mosquito to light is like a kid to candy. Kids just love candy. Uh, you know, I was a youth pastor for a while, and man, teenagers would do anything for a chocolate bar or some candy or some food. I remember when I first became a youth pastor, I was young, 18. It was in West Kelowna, and the youth pastors of the city had these big events, and what they would actually do is have a milk chugging contest. They would bring up contestants, teenagers, and I think they, I think they won like a two liter pop and pizza or something if they won this event. But literally, they would chug a gallon of milk, and your body can't contain it. So they'd bring garbage cans, and these teenagers would chug, puke, chug, puke. It's not crazy, but this happened all the time at these events. And so this one time, I was helping organize it. I was one of the newer ones. The other youth pastor that was partnering with the event was at a local high school, brings, out these, the, brings in the milk jugs, and the teenagers go ahead and they chug, 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 puke, chug. One of them wins, ends up, he ends up almost collapsing in the stands afterwards because he gets mild hypothermia because the other youth pastor had the milk outside and it was winter in his van, so it was cold, and he drank so much so fast it lowered his body temperature and his body couldn't handle it. He ended up in the hospital. And after that, they said, you know, maybe we need to make sure that we do milk chugging differently or but you know, the purpose of me saying that, again, my mind is a memory, is just to get some food, or particularly candy, p- kids will do crazy things. Teenagers will go wild for that. Part of it's the glory of the moment, and it's a weird type of glory in that. But we love candy. You know, parents, I'm a parent now, parents will tell their kids, don't eat candy before a meal. Because the, the sugar buzz can mask your hunger for the real nutrients that your body actually needs. And in our world, luxuries, comforts, traveling, money, shopping, sex, these become like spiritual candies giving us a a sugar buzz, right? And distracting us and masking us from being hungry for the real soul nutrients that we need which is Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, the source of life. And so I think a thing for us to recognize is that, yet, we actually will face real life and challenging circumstances, and in themselves, they don't lead us to joy. Paul wasn't rejoicing in the circumstances of prison, but in real life, even in challenging circumstances, what can happen is some of that spiritual sugar is taken away, and now we are actually um, seeing our real hunger for the real nutrients that we need in Jesus. So often, you may be experience this in your life, you face a challenging circumstance, it can actually lead you closer to God. Because now some of these, these, these sugary treats have been stripped away, and now it's like, what do I, who do I actually need in my life? What is my life actually about? Who can actually satisfy me and give me the nutrients that my soul desires? And that is God alone, because he created us for him. So let's not live our lives just trying to find joy in favorable circumstances. Let's not be kids seeking spiritual candy, but actually having our souls malnourished through our life. You know, Jesus said you could gain the world but lose your soul. That's not what we want. And so there's three important words in English that are so important here in Philippians 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord. We're instructed not to rejoice in circumstances, but to rejoice in the Lord. If joy is circumstantial, then we can't rejoice in all circumstances because we can't rejoice and have pain at the same time. And life is full of pain, isn't it? So if it's either or, if it's joyful or struggling, then we can't have both. Along this line of thinking, Timothy Keller, pastor and scholar, aptly says in reference to this, you can't have joy in any circumstance because your joy is a circumstance. But the good news for you and I is that's not the case. The joy that Jesus offers us is not in a circumstance, but in him. It transcends circumstances. So Paul can be in a circumstance of challenge in prison and yet rejoice because he rejoices in the Lord who is above and beyond 
the circumstance itself. And so the life of joy that God invites us into is not based on the circumstance, but based on him who is always faithful with us amidst any circumstance. So Paul's focus is not on the lack of his situation, but on the fullness of his Savior. His gaze is not glued on the chains in the temporary, but on the gains in the eternal. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus, friends. A full life, a life of joy, is not a life just filled with more fun or comfortable circumstances. Fullness is found in Jesus who fills us. And Jesus fills us so that we can pour out. He fills so that we can pour. So I want to say this statement, a full life is a life poured out for Jesus. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. Paul's an older man. He's seen religious success and he's seen challenges and he's rejoicing. He's rejoicing. And this summer, we're going to be invited to look at the words that God, God spoke through Paul, right, by his spirit, to the church in Philippi and to us. This is God's word to us. We have so much to learn through this letter. I'm excited for this summer. So for today, that's the backdrop of the series. Now just a few comments on, on some of the verses that are going to lead us into where we're landing for next week. Look at in your Bible, Philippians 2.12. I'm just going to look at two verses, chapter 2, verses 12 to 18. And then next week, we're going to dive back into chapter 19. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. So Paul says, therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, therefore, whenever you see therefore, what's it there for? It, it's a bridge to the previous part of the passage. And the previous part of the passage is about Jesus. Jesus humbled himself and came down to live the humble servant life. Jesus lowered himself actually to save us, to love us, and to lift us. And so in light of Jesus, in light of Jesus' humility, in light of Jesus' service, in light of Jesus' pursuit, in light of Jesus' glory, respond. And in light of all of that, he says, Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. There's an interesting aspect. God works in, you work out, right? Salvation is not achieved from God. It's received, it's received from God. We don't achieve it. We don't achieve it. We receive it. God gives us a, a new identity. He gives us salvation. He gives us a new life. And in light of that, in light of what God works in, now we work it out with fear and trembling, intentionally. It's like the, the salvation's there that we receive by faith in Jesus, but now we have to live with intentionality responding to that in faith. Like you have a muscle in your body that's already there, but you do certain exercises to work it out. And he says, in light of all that Jesus has done in his goodness and glory, look at your salvation, take it seriously, and work it out. Because it's actually God that's filling you. He's pouring in, and now you're called to pour out. You're called to work it out. Well, that's an exciting thing, actually. God, can you come and do more of a work in me? And then help me to work it out for you. Uh, verse 14, do all things without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless. And so he says, so that you can shine like lights amidst a crooked and dark world. Be, you know, don't be grumbling, right? I don't know, have you met somebody and you're like, how's it going? They're like, oh, I'm busy, tired, so hard, this. And they just say negative things. Like, I, you ever met, um, what's the name of that show? But Eeyore? right? Like, oh, I don't know. It's life's so hard. And they just complain and, and grumble about things, right? We don't want to be Eeyore. You know, and there's the thing, the sad thing for me is that, you know, I can sometimes drift towards melancholy. And actually, at different times, people have bugged me, like, Brett, you sound like Eeyore. You're like, oh, it's, you know, how's it going? Fine. And um, that, that's actually challenging to me. I'm like, it's kind of funny that, you know, Natalie was just joking with me about that the other day. She's like, don't be like Eeyore. But actually, I don't want to be like you, or I don't want to be grumbling and talking about how busy, or it's not a competition who's busiest around us, or is the most stressed, or something. No, we're blessed. We've got Jesus. We've got a calling. Don't be grumbling. Lift your eyes to Jesus. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. We need to shine like lights, city lights. We are lights to the world. They look and say, oh, there's something different about that people, how they live, how they love. Verse 16, and hold fast to the word of life 
so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. He's saying, you shine like lights, Philippians. You shine like lights, city lights, and hold fast. Don't give up. Persevere. Don't let that difficulty, don't let that offense or bitterness, don't let that issue become a distraction for what God wants to do in his church and in your life. Shine like lights and hold fast to the truth of God's word. Because I don't want to be laboring in vain, he says. I've poured my life into you. Now hold fast. Run, don't, we don't want to run in vain either, do we? And then he says, I'm rejoicing. Even so, if I'm to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all, and you can rejoice with me. See, Paul's saying, if I'm to be poured out like a drink offering, in previous generations, God's people would offer sacrifices. And they would offer a a sacrifice, and there would be a primary sacrifice, and then at times, a drink offering would be poured out. Um... This, this fragrant offering to God. And Paul's saying, Philippians, you've given this sacrificial gift of partnership to me. They've sent resources, money, things to probably help him while he's in prison, because often your friends would need to pay your way while you're there. So they've come, they've been his faithful partners in the gospel, and just like you and I get to partner in the gospel work in our city, if you're a follower of Jesus or you want to follow Jesus today, he says, you've given a gift, that's a sacrifice, but I'm pouring myself out as a drink offering. I'm pouring it all out. And your sacrifice plus my offering, we're partnering together in worshiping God. And in this I rejoice. And you can rejoice as well. Paul's not saying, oh, we're so obligated to follow Jesus to do the right thing. He said, I'm pouring out my life. You've given a sacrifice. I'm pouring it all out and we can rejoice. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. Jesus fills and we pour. And this is, this is what Paul is stating. He says, I don't want to run in vain. I'm pouring out my life, and as we pour out our lives for Jesus, we can rejoice in this. Situations may change, but our Savior doesn't change. We can look to Jesus, and we can rejoice in Him always. You know, this reminds me of another portion of Scripture that Paul wrote. It's from the letter to the Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, let me read it. He says, but as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. By great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. <laughs> like, this is Paul talking about his life, right? Look at, look at the talking about challenging life, talking about circumstances that aren't ideal. This is all that he's been led into as he gave his life to serving Jesus. Right? This is not the prosperity gospel that the people on TV talk about. This is not what North America likes to focus on, like, you know, give your life to Jesus and Jesus will solve your problems. Give your money to Jesus and Jesus will pay your bills. You follow Jesus and he'll fix your marriage, he'll fix your kids. That's not the, Paul's saying, man, we've been servants and we've been giving our pouring her out and it's been hard. Riots, beatings, hunger, right? You know, this isn't Karma. This isn't all easy, right? The, Jesus says, pick up the cross and follow me. He doesn't say, I, you follow me and I'm going to lead you to a nice comfortable couch. But he says he'll give us life. And a full life. A joyful life. It's a life that's poured out for Jesus. And matters for him. What are you living for? What are you pouring out your life for? Paul said, I'm pouring it out for Jesus. You know, God sometimes doesn't give us what we want so he can lead us to what we need. He goes on. So by purity, verse 6 of 2 Corinthians 6, by purity, by knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, he goes on, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying, and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As sorrowful, but always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. Look at these saying, yes, it's difficult, and yet we rejoice. Yes, there's this, but then there's also this. He's recognizing the tension of our lives and calling them to the truth of a full life is found in Jesus. 
See, Paul is, not, is telling them, our contentment is not based in the context of this economy, but in the kingdom of eternity. He's saying, our joy is not based in a situation, but a Savior. Our peace is not placed in a certain position, but in a person. Peace is not found at the beach or the mountain, right, or the vacation. Those are environments that God has given us as a gracious gift to point us to him, the one we truly need. Don't let the circumstances, don't chase the circumstances to be like spiritual uh, sugar buzzes that distract us from the nutrients of the soul that we desire that's found in God and God alone. Paul said we've poured out our lives. He said we've spoken freely. Our mouths have been wide open. Our hearts have been wide open. No restraint. No suppressing. Paul is laying it out. Philippians, shine bright. Hold fast. Run strong. Pour it out and rejoice. He's laying it out. You know, Ultimate Frisbee, anyone play Ultimate Frisbee before? Uh, they have what you call a layout, where you fully jump and dive to either catch or to um, block the Frisbee disc. And I, when I, a long time ago now, when I was playing Ultimate Frisbee, I dove to catch a Frisbee, and somebody dove into me and collided with me, and ended up landing on my shoulder, and I separated my shoulder. And uh, super intense uh, pain. I, it was actually a few years of rehab, and I still have a... Bo- uh, um, um, a bump where the bone popped up because of the, the tear. It wasn't a dislocation, a separation. And I remember playing in the VUL a few years ago in the Vancouver Ultimate League. And I was sprinting, chasing for this flying disc coming in. And I remember thinking, if I leaped and, did a, and laid out right now, I might catch this disc. And I think one of my teammates maybe even yelled, lay out! And as I was sprinting, going, I, I, I thought of the time where I, where I fell, where I got hit. And um, I didn't. I kind of slid in, and I, I just was short of it. And Paul is saying to the Corinthians, he's saying to the Philippians, I'm pouring it out, I'm, I'm laying it out. And sometimes you lay out, and you might feel pain, but it's, it's, he said, but it's worth it. Lay it out for Jesus. Lay it out. He says, our hearts are wide open, Corinthians. And to the Philippians, he's saying, I poured it all out. It's poured it out. See, we can find ourselves trying to chase heaven when in reality heaven is chasing us, right? And we can spend our life trying to pull heaven down when in reality Jesus, the the one, the prince of heaven, spent his life to pull us up. God loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to give you a new life and a new purpose. And we we can recognize and receive that at four R's so simply. First, I recognize my need in sin. Second, I repent, which means I change directions and I start looking to Jesus. Three, I receive as I believe. I receive from Jesus. You can receive today eternal life. You can receive forgiveness. You can receive power. You can receive a spirit and a new identity in believing. I don't have to do all the right things. I just believe. And then I respond in faith. Recognize, repent, receive as I believe, and then respond trusting Jesus. This is the invitation to all of us today. And if that's the first time for you, God wants to restore you life. He wants to reconcile you to relationship with himself. He wants to lead you to amazing things in this life and the life to come. And today, that can be your case. Would you let us know in the chat that, hey, I want to follow Jesus. I want more information. We would love to celebrate and start with you and help you respond in trusting him. Or maybe you've already done that. Then here's the thing. What are you living for? Are you pouring out your life for Jesus? Because a full life is a life poured out. You know, there's these mysterious paradoxes in following Jesus, right? You, you find life by dying to self. You become great by being a servant. You gain by giving. You find fullness by pouring out. So if you are a follower of Jesus, then let me ask you this question. How are you trying to fill yourself with spiritual candy? And how is this distracting you from pouring out your life for Jesus? How are you... Filling, filling yourself with spiritual candy, masking the real hunger that's there, distracting. And how is this distracting you from pouring out your life for Jesus? A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. 
A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. God is looking over the earth for hearts that would be fully devoted to him. God wants to change the hearts of people in our city, including ours. And he wants to change our hearts, and he wants to fill us as we pour out. See, what God does in you, he wants to also work through you. And there's a work that he wants to do in us, but we've got to let him work through us. And God wants to use you and I in what he wants to do in our day, in our city. None of us are here by accident. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. I want to pour out my life for Jesus, and I invite you to be a part of this. You know, the famous missionary back in the 18th century, William Carey, said this. He said, I'm not afraid of failure. I'm afraid at succeeding at things that don't matter. I'm not afraid of failure. I'm afraid of succeeding at things that don't matter. Friends, life is fragile and short. God made us on purpose. He put us here so that we could know him, we could help each other and others know him. We don't want to run in vain. We don't want to be filled with things that actually at the end of the day leave us empty. We want a fullness of joy. We want a fullness of life. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. And Paul is talking all of this stuff about joy. And he he says, "I I want to run in vain. I don't want to run in vain. Hold on fast, Philippians. And he says, I'm pouring out my life as an offering. I'm pouring it all out. And and that echoes what we read in Corinthians, where he says, my heart's been wide open. I've held nothing back. And, uh, man, that's inspiring, but also challenging. Can I say that? Can you say that? What is the Lord inviting you to today? He wants to challenge you. He wants to inspire you. But in the midst of the call, it's a call to joy. Tim Chile says, succeeding at lesser things at the cost of greater things is the worst form of failure. So church, friends, those listening today, let's not spend our life trying to fill, fill ourselves with things that leave us empty. Let's not chase mir- mirages. Let's not distract ourselves by chasing spiritual candy while our souls are being malnourished. Let's not try to gain the world but lose our soul. Let's look to Jesus, give ourselves to Jesus, because the full life that we actually want is found in him and him alone. And a full life is a life full of Jesus. And when we're full of Jesus, we pour out. A full life is a life poured out for Jesus. Let's respond to him today. You can become a Christian today, and if you are a Christian, I'd say that start this week. Can you read the Bible every day this week? Maybe read a chapter of Philippians each day. Let's make time to connect with Jesus. And then if, if do you have somebody mentoring you in, in, in what the next steps are for you to walk and follow him? If not, then begin to look for that. Join a serving team, connect with a life community, but let's begin to serve and follow Jesus together and pour our lives out for what he wants to do in our city, in our day, for his glory and for our good. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the book of Philippians. We thank you that you invite us to joy and you have more in store. Give us faith. Give us courage. Give us love. Love for you love for one another, and love for the world. Enough love that we will respond in the ways that you are inviting us to. Praise your name. Amen. Amen. Onwards, church.